Hi everybody, this is uh, Exodus Proxima, or Proxima Centauri, digital version. Let me just uh, bring the sound down a bit here. Voice, actually, we can bring the sound up of this. Just a voice. There we go. Now, it's a digital edition. It, uh, there's a board game out there. It's been out there for quite a long while. People enjoy it. I just purchased this game, so... My goodness, the sounds here. Let's go back. All right. Let's go to campaign. It's Okay, first day, start your training and meet Nana. Now, th there's something that kind of bothered me about this at the beginning. Um, I know it's going to be a short preamble. Uh, the only videos made of the digital version is from the developers themselves. I've been hunt, trying to hunt down uh, videos to watch before I purchased it. And it was like there's nothing out there and I, couldn't, I can't figure out why. So I decided I bought it and we're going to take it for a spin. And uh, We'll see what this offers up here. Now it's a real-time strategy game, um, as you can tell. Uh, graphics don't make a game, mind you. Never have, never will. But I needed to find out for myself why the game, why nobody's made any videos. There's only, I think, seven reviews. One is bad, the six are good. Um, which kind of makes me think that the six that are good are made by people like friends of the company or something like that. So. Okay, I shouldn't have turned down the volume. Okay, I'm going to sleep. Obviously. Going Betty buys. It's kind of weird for the graphics. Okay, here it is. Okay, let me first go and turn up the volume on the voices here. Voice volume. Um, the graphic settings. There's nothing here for for graphics, which is kind of odd, except for resolution. Okay. All right, to introduce you to the interface, uh, we'll simulate the daily decisions our leaders face. You can now view intel about yourself and your opponents on their player tab at any point throughout the game. Okay. Can I not interact while you're talking to me? No. Okay. Fonts are a bit wonky, Lockett. Select your player tab now. This displays income overview, researched technologies, ship blueprints, and tactical analysis. We will discuss these in more detail later. Close your player tab now. Okay. <sighs> nope, that's definitely not what I'm looking to do. Okay, escape. The standard event order is tracked at the top of the HUD. We begin with the upkeep stage, where players collect resources and increase clone population. Okay. I'm clicking. Okay. What did you just do? I don't know what you just did. <laughs> During the council stage, you'll deliberate and vote on political decisions. Okay. There are three types of political decisions. Laws, which stay in effect for the remainder of the game. Resolutions, which affect just one turn. And executive decisions, which resolve immediately. Okay. Um, bid CP on the political law that you want to take effect. So, okay. CP is what? Obviously, this blue diamond thingies? Okay. Alright, so there's defense resolution. Cost of buying any shield is reduced by 2 CP. 
as civilian tech costs of researching new civilian technologies reduced by 2 CP. So I would probably would like to go with this one if I can. You'll influence your vote with crystallized platinum, or CP, through bribes, okay, lobbying, maybe not. and other financial means. You can bid zero CP for the decision, but then only your vote counts, and any amount of CP spent plus another vote will beat yours. Bid one CP for defense resolution now. Okay, obviously I was wrong. Okay, one. Okay, what's going on here? Looks like we both bid more for defense resolution than we needed to. Had we discussed it first, we both could have bid lower. This is the key to the council stage. However, be careful. Your opponents may try to convince you they want the same thing to trick you into bidding low. Okay. Well, he, 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 he. All right, he bid, uh-huh. Okay, how many did he bid? He bid two, I bid one, so he overbid, I didn't. Anyway, it doesn't Next, matter. Next, the Vice Chancellor proposes some possible bonus actions. This is a special action that will be available to all players later this turn. Action bonuses. Oh, it's seven in the morning, uh, why am I doing this now? <laughs> This is a special action that will be available to all players later this turn. Okay. As Chancellor, you'll select the bonus action you want us all to receive. You have the option to select none of the proposed cards. Uh -oh. Select the Buy Upgrades bonus action now. Next is the election, where we decide the new turn order and who will have final say in the coming round as Chancellor. Like with political decisions, you bid CP to exert your influence. Your vote is for yourself as Chancellor, and you cannot cast a vote for another player. Bid 3 CP now. He bid 2, I bid 3, so I stay Congratulations! Okay. You have been re-elected Chancellor for this turn. Chancellor is the first player to act and react in the next stage. Okay, so that's the benefit of being a Chancellor then. Um, yeah, okay. After I make my move, then I get to see everybody else's move and I get to react to it. Cool. Okay. The action stage is where you fulfill administrative duties, directing your faction to execute actions that advance your empire. There are six action types to choose from. Okay, there's trade, banking, research, mining, build ships, buy upgrades. Okay. For this turn, we need CP to run the Empire. Since the banking action gives us 4 CP, let's select it as our first action. Okay, good. That's a reasonable idea. Okay. As you can see, everything's here. Uh, okay. Uh, Each player is allowed to react to the chosen actions. Reactions execute in turn order, but come at a cost, requiring the work and sacrifice of your people. Reacting to your own action costs one population from your home planet, and reacting to an opponent's action costs two. Okay, hold on. I gotta reread this again. Reacting to your own action costs one population from your home planet. Why would I... Are you speaking... Okay, from your home planet and reacting to an opponent's action cost you. Okay. I'm not quite understanding that. Reacting to your own action. Why would I react to my own action? Or are you saying that my opponent's reaction to my reaction? Okay, this is too early for me to be doing this, but anyway. Let's react to your banking action, which has the research reaction. Oh, uh, okay. Alright, so it's going to cost me one CP, well, it's going to cost him two to react to my, okay. God, I can't be doing this. Don't worry, the lost population will be repurposed at a rate of two per turn, and will be added to your home planet during the next upkeep stage. Okay, so I went ahead and I spent one human being 
and I'll gain two, so, okay. Here are your research options. Note that they're arranged by color in four columns, and each option has one of three types, civilian, military, and transport. Okay. Each technology researched gives your scientists an improved understanding of its industry and reduces the cost for future research by the same color or type. These reductions accumulate as the game progresses, so it's best to specialize. Okay. Don't Seeing think as defense oh. resolution is part of our current political state, it is a good idea to take advantage of the reduced cost of shields. To do so, we must first have a shield technology researched. Let's research EMG shields now. Okay. He's passed. Now we move on to the second action of the stage. We can purchase your newly researched EMG shields in the upcoming bonus action. So for now, let's build some more ships. Select the build ships action now. And because, okay, yeah, because I'm Chancellor, I get that last, okay. I think. New ships are deployed on your homeworld. Shipbuilding requires CP and Axinium. Thus the colonization of Axinium-producing planets is integral to a fleet-oriented empire. Let's build a fighter and dark raider for now. Here we've moved to the second reaction for the turn. Our population is more important than either of these options, so let's skip it for now. I only have four people? Wow. Now it's time for the bonus buy upgrades action that was chosen at the start of this turn. Let's get those EMG shields you researched. The upgrades available to you are purchased during this action. Basic cannons are available to every player. Other upgrades must be researched first. EMG shields normally cost 2 CP each, but they're currently free since defense resolution is in effect. To purchase and install your upgrades, simply drag them from the selection box to their respective blueprints on the holo table. The upgrade slots are matched by both shape and color. Purchase six shields and two basic cannons now. Okay. How do you... Okay. Um... How do you go around purchasing? Those are shields, are they not? No. There's the cannons. How is it they're not turning? Oh, okay. I thought it was just gonna snap for me. Alright, and uh, two basic cannons now. Um they already got okay, they all seem to have the basic cannon. Okay, we're gonna leave our War crew. We're gonna load up on our world war cruiser. I just purchased on two basic cannons now. I just did that. Okay. Um, I mean, do you want me to buy more or? Is that what you're wanting me to do? Or maybe I'm supposed to put that one over here. Okay. Uninstall upgrades below will be discarded. Right click and drag to move the camera. Okay. Okay. Cool. They're nifty looking ships. Okay. Don't be asking me. Uh, don't be saying I'm on my own now because to be quite honest with you, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I honestly don't. Next, we move on to the WMD stage, where any faction controlling a rocket installation can launch attacks on their enemies. 
Thankfully, we haven't escalated there yet, as no player has researched a rocket technology. Good for me, then. Finally, we move to the conquest stage, where you fulfill your role as Fleet Admiral. Here, you'll direct your ships to explore the system, deploy colonists to off-world planets, and battle against opponents and the Centaurian Resistance. Colonization is the key to domination, as gotcha. strategic planets are necessary for resource production and accumulating victory points. Okay. Colonization is the key to domination, as strategic planets are necessary for resource production and accumulating victory points. I'm definitely going to be doing another video later on today. Um, oh, for fact. <laughs> Oh man, what time is it now? Oh my god, it's 7.30. Uh, okay, so forgive me out there, folks. Um. Before you order your ships to move, you can mount population to move them about the system. Only the battle carrier and war cruiser can hold population. Let's mount three population to our battle carrier, filling its stasis pods to capacity. Okay. If a ship carrying population is destroyed, the population it was carrying is lost. The war cruiser can usually take care of itself in combat, but the battle carrier is not well suited to defend itself. Make sure you protect your colonists within with an escort. Okay. With that in mind, we can now plot our first movement. Let's direct our battle carrier and its escort of Dark Raiders and the fighter to Sagomo. To move your ships, simply select them from the movement window and then select your desired destination. Okay. Um, so we got a Raider, 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 Fighter. That's my carrier. So how I do that? You'll notice that once you've selected your ship, its available destinations are highlighted on the map. As we only have basic drives, we can only travel one system per conquest stage. Okay. You can also select multiple ships at the same time by selecting them all before plotting your move or gotcha. clicking the planet they are at to select all the ships currently at that location. Okay. Continue plotting courses for all ships to Sagomo. Review the courses you've plotted. Each player sets their destinations and movement resolves simultaneously. Select Confirm when all your ships are plotted to Sagomo. Okay. Oh, neat little animation there. Right on. With your ships in place, you may now deploy population to colonize. Notice, however, that this planet has an asteroid belt around it. These wreak havoc on our deployment sensors, and there is a chance that any population you deploy may not make it to the surface. Oh, terrific. To mitigate that risk, I recommend you attempt to deploy all three population from your battle carrier now. Failed deployments will simply return to the ship. Ah, uh, two out of three. There is one more conquest stage each turn, giving you two opportunities to move, fight, and colonize. We deployed an extra population to Sagomo, so let's pick them up and bring them on the next movement. Now we will move to Andrata. Notice the one indicator over the planet. Centaurian resistance has been detected in the system. Okay. This is a relatively weak insurgency, as indicated by the one. Your current fleet is more than a match for it. Okay. The resistances with 2 and 3, however, are more powerful, and you would be wise to avoid them until you've improved your fleet. Okay. Move all your ships to Andrata now. Combat begins when two or more factions occupy the same system. 
During combat, each ship has a chance to score damage on the enemy. Damage assignments are resolved simultaneously. Okay. You have scored two hits. That's enough to destroy the enemy, who only has one shield. To assign damage, simply tap the target ship. Assign the damage now. I already did, unfortunately. Hope I didn't jump ahead of myself. I obviously did, didn't I? I did. I jumped too fast. Shooting him in. Can I reset? The okay. Centaurian has also scored a hit and targeted your battle carrier. Damage will remain on your ships permanently unless you research basic repairs, which removes one damage from each ship at the start of each turn. Whoa, beautiful. Nice shot. Holy crap, man. Look at my poor carrier. All right. Are you kidding me? My poor carrier got its ass. However, since the battle carrier has three shields, it can withstand four damage until it is destroyed. Each okay. Centaurian ship carries a reward, usually in the form of currency or technology, oh, that research. can be redeemed for immediate benefit or saved for that. extra victory points at the end of the game. This Centaurian was carrying technical data for the fusion drive technology. What? Oh, it does do that. This is pretty cool. Surviving actually. ships can deploy population. Since there are no asteroids around this planet, we will have no problem sending colonists to the surface. Let's deploy one population now. That is a full turn of Exodus, Proxima Centauri. Now we move again to the upkeep stage. Since you've colonized new planets, you'll harvest additional resources. That's cool. Continue this game and get a feel for the rest of the interactions that may occur. Familiarity with the interface and game flow will be imperative to your success in the training to come. And remember, failure means repurposing. Good luck. Okay, well this is where this video ends. It appears, okay, I've got, ooh, I got 11. It's got 12, bloody hell. Okay, well, this is where this uh, video is going to end. I'm going to bed. I'll be doing another video um, later on today. Um, so, if you like the game, look in the description. The link will be there for you to pick up a copy. Um, so, take care, have a good one, and uh, see you around.